Sorry, the YouTube advertise. Okay. Okay, seems like uh, we're also live on YouTube. Please allow me to check audio also there. Uh, sorry. Okay. Okay, seems like. Okay, perfect. Okay, I guess we can get started now. Um, welcome everyone to this session of PNS SSD course here at um, uh, ETH. And uh, please, if you have questions, uh, you can both put it in Zoom chats for the ones who've joined in Zoom and also YouTube chat. I will try to also uh, check that part. Um, and please, if there is any uh, problem with um, audio or video, please let me know. But so far, things seem to be working. Um, so I am uh, Nika Mansuri Riasi. I'm a third year PhD student here at uh, Zafari Research Group. Uh, oh, I am seeing that I need to admit. Um, uh, student, okay. Uh, I'd like to see if I can do that automatically so we don't um, uh, interrupt the lecture. So please give me a moment. Okay. Okay, I guess we can then get started. Um, so today I'm going to talk about GenStore, a high performance in storage processing system for genome sequence analysis. This is a work that me and my um, collaborators here and um, uh, across different um, institutions have uh, published at ASPLUS 2022. Um, and um, we'll go through it uh, in more detail today. Okay. So genome sequence analysis is critical for many applications, such as personalized medicine, outbreak tracing, as we've seen over the past years, and evolutionary studies. Genome, sequence analysis, uh, genome sequencing machines extract smaller fragments of the original DNA sequence known as reads. Basically, when you have a DNA sequence as your input, uh, these uh, genome sequencing machines um, read them in like small parts because they cannot read them as a whole. Um, so uh, these are smaller fragments that get extracted in terms of like DNA alphabet. So we call these things reads. So um, in order to have any analysis of the data that we have obtained, we need to perform an operation called read mapping, which is the first step in genome sequence analysis and aligns reads to potential matching locations within the reference genome. So if we have a patient or uh, some um, other, let's say for other org organisms that data collected, and we want to gain some biological information out of it. Uh, we align these reads to basically uh, to a reference genome, which we know already, for example, this is a human reference genome on average, um, uh, represents a person without, let's say, specific biological uh, issues. And then like you would align uh, these reads to these reference genome. And then for each uh, location that these reads match to, you, we perform an alignment step uh, to find the degree of similarity or alignment score between uh, the reads and the reference genome at those locations. Uh, so calculating uh, alignment score, basically finding differences between the read and the reference exactly. Uh, so that requires a computationally expensive step called approximate string matching or ASM. 
to account for uh, differences between the reads and the reference genome. So these differences then can uh, refer to, can represent sequencing errors or genetic variations. And then based on that, uh, uh, biologists or healthcare providers or um, other scientists can draw conclusions or like, let's say, provide personalized medicine or perform um, outbreak tracing as we discussed in the previous slide. So, um, however, as we discussed, this operation requires um, computationally expensive approximate string matching. And then the read mapping operation performs this alignment on large uh, genomic data sets, uh, for example, containing millions of reads. Therefore, read mapping is uh, both computationally expensive and also incurs high data movement overhead. So there has been significant effort, uh, specifically over the past uh, couple of years, into improving uh, read mapping performance due to its importance in um, the applications we discuss and beyond. So um, prior works have tried to improve it through efficient heuristics, hardware accelerators, and various filters that prune reads uh, that do not require this expensive computation. Uh, at different parts of the stack, uh, let's say in com computer centric or cache centric, or like uh, through uh, solutions near main memory. Uh, while these approaches address the computation overhead in read mapping and data movement in these sections, uh, none of them alleviate data movement overhead from storage, whose impact becomes even larger when the other um, uh, overheads and computation overhead gets alleviated. So um, our key idea here in this work is to filter reads that uh, do not require the expensive alignment computation in the storage system to fundamentally reduce uh, data movement overhead of read mapping. Examples of reads that do not require that costly alignment step would be uh, exactly matching reads to the reference genome that do not need approximate string matching performed during alignment and non-matching reads that have no potential matching locations uh, in the reference genome, and therefore uh, they can skip the alignment step. Uh, however, filtering reads in a modern SSD can be challenging due to different behavior across read mapping workloads and uh, limited hardware resources in the SSD. So by addressing these challenges, we propose GenStore, the first in storage processing system designed for genome sequence analysis to reduce both computation and data movement overhead. And uh, GenStore provides uh, high performance and energy benefits compared to state-of-the-art hardware and software baselines. So that was a summary of what we're going to be seeing in this talk. Let's uh, start with the background on uh, read mapping so we can dive into the talk and the design of GenStore in more detail. Uh, read, uh, so mapping reads to the reference genomes can be um, expensive due to the expensive computation on large data sets. And the search space in the reference genome can be very large. For example, the human reference genome contains more than uh, 3 billion characters. Therefore, read mappers typically use an index of this reference genome to reduce the search space. Uh, so uh, this index contains unique k-length subsequences um, of the, uh, which we call them k-mers, that are extracted from the reference genome. And also this index has the locations of these k-mers in the reference genome. So how do we look up this index? So read mapping um, is a three-step process usually, and the state-of-the-art uh, mappers involve several heuristics to reduce the cost of um, expensive alignment computation. Uh, so let's see what these steps are. In the first step, which is called uh, seeding, uh, we want to determine some potential locations in the reference genome or called seeds uh, that we can, uh, that the reads might potentially align to. So instead of going through those 3 billion locations and check one by one, we want to already find some candidates. So how do we do that? We extract some uh, k-mers, these k-length subsequences uh, that we talked about. So they extract these k-mers. So it can be like, I don't know, let's say 15 mers or like 19 mers. So k can be different numbers. Um, here, for example, for sake of this example, I'm showing three MERS. 
So the, we extract these chimeras out of the reference genome and we look up each of them inside the index. And for the chimeras that have uh, that hit in the index, we mark their locations uh, in the reference genome as potential matching locations or seeds. Then uh, for the next step, we want to see if we can uh, basically prune uh, some of uh, these seeds. So the next step is called uh, seeding or um, sorry, seed filtering or chaining that prunes the seeds in the reference to which the read uh, would not align using a simple approximation of this alignment score. So we perform like a more high level operations that are more computationally, uh, let's say cheaper. And then we would then go um, uh, prune some of them. And at the end of this step, the reads that have all their locations filtered, then they already can skip the third stage. Uh, and the other ones go to this third stage for the remaining reads, which is the costly alignment uh, step. And that one determines the uh, exact differences between the read and the reference genome uh, via um, that expensive approximate string matching that we talked about. So that was the high level, uh, let's say typical steps that conventional read mappers would use. Okay, um, so we perform experimental studies in our work to understand the potential of efficient in storage filters for improving read mapping uh, performance. We perform a case study on real world genomic uh, read data sets on various read mapping systems and state of the art SSD configurations. And we make several observations. First, the ideal in storage filter significantly improves performance by reducing data movement overhead and also um, uh, reducing computation over it. So it reduces both of these things. And uh, also filtering outside SSD relatively provides lower performance benefit because uh, it does not, first of all, reduce data movement overhead from storage. And secondly, um, it must compete uh, with read mapping, uh, main read mapping operations from filtered read for other system resources because it's performed outside the storage. Uh, so it can uh, compete from uh, storage, external bandwidth, main memory bandwidth, and compute resources. So also we observed that a hardware accelerator based, uh, based on state-of-the-art hardware read mapping accelerator is proposed in the literature. Uh, so we observed that this uh, reduces the computation bottleneck, which uh, further makes I.O. even a larger bottleneck in the system. So basically what that means is that um, in storage parsing can provide a lot of benefits for read mapping. And that benefit would increase because uh, a lot of uh, works have previously focused on various overheads uh, and other parts of the system. So relatively now the impact of IO is increasing. So motivated by these observations, our goal is to design an in-storage filter for genome sequence analysis in a cost-effective manner. And we have three key objectives in designing our new system. First, the system should provide high in storage filtering performance to overlap the filtering with the read mapping of unfiltered data. And second, the design should support reads with different properties and different degrees of genetic variation. And third, it should not require significant additional hardware overhead. And to this end, uh, we propose GenStore, which is the first in storage processing system designed for genome sequence analysis. And our idea here is to filter reads that do not require alignment inside the storage system and send the unfiltered data to the host system for uh, further processing. And uh, however, as we discussed, so reads, uh, filtering reads in modern SSD can be challenging. So that is actually due to different workload uh, behavior across uh, read mapping workloads and the limited hardware resources in the SSD. We will dive uh, uh, into them in more detail in the next slides. So now let's uh, take a look at filtering opportunities um, based on the input reads. So uh, sequencing machines that we talked about at the very first slide, uh, so those uh, based on their technology produce one of two kinds of reads. Um, Either they are highly accurate 
a bit shorter, and then uh, either they're less accurate and longer. So read, uh, based on uh, these, we leverage two filtering opportunities. First, uh, we can exactly matching reads, which are reads that match exactly to one or more matching um, uh, basically subsequences of the reference genome and do not require approximate uh, string matching during alignment. So these things can frequently happen in um, short reads that have low sequencing errors and also low genetic variation. For example, humans, um, reads uh, from humans can, uh, let's say 80% of them on average match to human reference genome uh, because uh, in general, we have low genetic variation, let's say compared to viral samples or like bacterial samples. So then we have these uh, non-matching reads. Uh, so we can, um, such reads do not have, let's say any potential matching location in the reference genome. Let's say after stage two in read mapping, uh, all the potential matching locations are seed would be filtered. So then we can skip the expensive alignment step that happens in the third step. So examples of such reads that uh, of non-matching reads can frequently occur in long read sets with high uh, sequencing error rates uh, or um, with high degree of genetic variation. For example, with um, virus samples, um, as I mentioned earlier. So by thorough analysis of this read mapping process for reads with different properties and different degrees of genetic variation, we designed two uh, low cost and storage filters. One is GenStore EM for filtering exactly matching reads and GenStore NM by um, uh, that filters uh, non-matching reads. So let's take a closer look at this GenStore EM. Uh, GenStore EM accelerates read mapping by using an efficient in storage filter to filter reads that have at least one exactly matching location in the reference genome via simple operations without requiring alignment. The key challenge in GenStore EM is the large number of random accesses to large data structures inside the SSD. So why would this be challenging? So large data structure, let's say you want to access the index and this index can be large, and um, it is very expensive to do that inside the SSD. So why is it uh, the case? So first, uh, NAND flash memory exhibits poor performance for random access reads, and there is limited DRAM capacity available in SSD, which is relatively small uh, compared to the size of the data structures that need to be accessed. Uh, so, to reduce the number of accesses per each read, we introduce read size scammers. Uh, therefore, instead of uh, having, uh, basically, as this is like we see, instead of extracting several scammers per each read and uh, performing index lookup for each of them, we can uh, use the whole read as one scammer and have only one index lookup per read. So the number already decreases. And to uh, avoid, let's say, random accesses to this index, we introduce the sorted index of these read size schemas. So um, when you sort the index, then you can we can sequentially scan this read set um, uh, to find the exact uh, matches. So we can basically perform that via um, sequential scanning of the read set and the index uh, together to so avoid fully random accesses. Uh, so let me show you a key idea of GenStore EM with a simplified example in which each short read consists of 10 characters. So usually this can be around a few hundred characters, let's say uh, 150, but now for the sake of Simplicity of this example, I want to show um, uh, a read that has 10 um, characters. Suppose that we have two data structures. So a sorted read data uh, read table, each entry of which stores a read and its unique ID, and uh, a KMER index, which contains all unique read sized KMERs of the reference genome. So if you remember, Initially, when I was giving a background, I talked about the KMERs that we extract from the reference genome. Here, again, we do the same, but here, KMER is bigger. 
Uh, so where was I? Okay. So that uh, has this like a sorted camera index, which contains all uh, unique read size camers of the reference genome along with each camer's corresponding location in the reference. So that is again, similar to the past. Um, the difference only being the camera size and also each uh, data structure is sorted by read and camera in alphabetical order. So why couldn't we sort the index before? because for each read, we would extract several k-mers. We needed to go to different parts of the index all the time. So we couldn't sort, uh, depended on the k-mers that were existing in the read. But here we only have one k-mer, so we have only one access anyways. So we can already sort these k-mers uh, in advance uh, since we have one access per read, yeah. So let's go through how we find um, actually a match in this exactly. We want to find an exactly matching uh, read. So we sequentially scan through these data structures in three different ways based on the comparison result of the current read and camer. First, when the current read and camer are identical, we record the read as an exactly matching read that can be filtered from further uh, mapping, read mapping process. Uh, so then we move to the next element in both of the arrays. Okay, so if the read is alphabetically larger than the camer, uh, we conclude that the camer does not match any read because we have been sequentially scanning, right? So if we already had a camer matching to the read, we would have found it. So if the camer is smaller than the read, it means that the camer would not match any uh, read. So we just can move to the next element. Okay, so then now the camer is uh, larger uh, than the read. So again, we conclude that the read, the, the read this time does not match any camer um, in the index. So when it doesn't match, we know that, okay, we need to send it to the read mapper. So this read mapper can happen anywhere, right? It can be a hardware accelerator outside SSD or like processing in memory accelerator, processing cache accelerator, anywhere, or like even a software uh, read mapper happening in, let's say, um, excuse it on the host CPUs. Uh, so um, th this can just go to the read mappers. Um, uh, out, outside. Uh, so then uh, we can go to the next read and examine the next read. So using this uh, uh, simple uh, sequential accesses um, and this technique, GenStore EM avoids random accesses and performs filtering using only simple low cost logic, which was uh, for comparison. Uh, so this but the key benefits that I talked about till now, uh, we uh, that is sorted read size uh, camera index um, will provide. This index actually takes up a large space, so 126 gigabytes, uh, 126 gigabytes for human index um, as an example. So th this is because of the large number of unique read size cameras. So imagine we have here 150 MERS, whereas in baseline we would have uh, 15 MERS or like 19 MERS. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, the number of unique elements is very large and also each element on its own um, is very large. So uh, to further reduce the overhead of GenStore EM, uh, we uh, replace the read size camers with a strong cache of each read that can act as sorting criterion and fingerprint of each entry. Um, so these hash values would take a smaller space. Uh, and then again, we can use this to sort um, the reads, right? Uh, because now we, we don't have the, sorry, to sort the camers because we don't sort the camers uh, on their own now. And we also do that for the reads too. So we uh, basically, instead of having these uh, strings as sorting criteria, now we have these hash values and that can also act as their fingerprint. So using um, strong hash values instead of the read size camers reduces the read size, sorry, reduces the size of the index by 3.9 times. Uh, 
So this is still larger than the baseline K-mer index used in conventional read mappers. Uh, but our proposal is feasible for in storage processing due to the large capacity and high internal bandwidth of uh, modern non-flash-based SSDs. Because you can access, you can distribute this data nicely and across different channels access them. So that shows actually example of this hardware software co-design uh, performed in this work. Because uh, what happens basically is that we analyze this application deeply, and based on the underlying hardware that we want to architect it for, uh, we also come up with these, uh, let's say, so, uh, algorithmic optimizations. So in a sense, this hardware software co-design uh, enables us to achieve um, basically the benefits that GenStore provides by considering these factors, uh, basically the opportunities and limitations um, of uh, the hardware we're architecting for. So, now I show the overall operation flow of GenStore EM with a sorted read table and sorted camera index in the NAND flash memory distributed across uh, all channels and dies. Um, so when the data is evenly distributed across all these channels, dies, and planes, we can leverage this full internal bandwidth of the SSD. And um, here we have a comparator logic in the on the SSD controller, um, small added logic. So Gestor EM consists of two steps. Step one reads the two data structures from NAND flash chips to the SSD's internal DRAM in a batched manner. So instead of bringing the whole data structure, since we're sequentially reading through it, we can small bring small batches like a few hundreds of megabytes. Uh, each time in the, the DRAM and then the capacity would be fine then. Then uh, step two performs exact match filtering within each read batch using simple comparator logic. Basically we bring these batches, then we compare reads and cameras sequentially as I showed you in previous slides. Um, okay. Step one and two are performed in a pipeline manner. Uh, and since they work in different batches, when you finish with the batch, you can already send it to the host system uh, for performing the read mapping. So therefore, during filtering, GenStore EM can send the unfiltered reads to the host system for full read mapping operation. And meanwhile, uh, concurrently, it can work on the next batches uh, without um, basically uh, using IO bandwidth or any data movement overhead happening outside uh, when filtering. So now let's take a closer look at GenStore NM for non-matching reads. Actually, before I go on, um, is there any question either in Zoom or on YouTube? I pause for a few seconds um, if you want to ask something. Okay, let's go on. Then we gen store and M. Um, I hope you remember the three steps we discussed: the seeding, uh, seed filtering, or chaining, and alignment. Uh, so using chaining, that second step, gen store and M filters most of the non-matching reads, which are reads that would not align to any subsequences in the reference genome. Recall that uh, chaining filter calculates a similarity score for each read called chaining score and filters reads with no high scoring potential matching location. Uh, basically, if a read already has all its potential matching locations filtered, then there's no need to go to the alignment because there's no location to align to. So, um, but calculating a chaining score in SSD can be challenging because finding the best chain score requires performing many iterations of a dynamic programming algorithm for all seeds within a read. And this can be part uh, particularly challenging for long reads since uh, they have a large number of k-mers per read. So they can be like around, I don't know, a million characters. So then we need to perform this dynamic programming operations um, 
And side ears stand to perform it uh, in a performance way, we would need a lot of buffer space uh, and um, a lot of parallelism inside the SSD so that you can um, filter these at high throughput, um, which would incur high um, uh, cost. So what can we do to reduce the cost of chaining? GenStore uh, NM uses a lightweight chaining filter that selectively performs chaining only on reads with a small number of seeds and directly sends the reads that would require more complex chaining to the host system. So um, why would this be beneficial or why would we want to do that? So this idea is based on our observation from analyzing a wide range of uh, real world genomic um, read data sets. So let me show you an example here. This figure shows alignment probability of a read and a long read data set to subsequences uh, in a reference genome. So that is the, this is the uh, vertical axis shows the alignment probability. And um, this is as a function of number of seats per read. So we want to see, for example, if a read has here um, 64 seats, uh, would it align? Uh, what would be the alignment probability? So we analyze this for different genomic data sets from different species, humans, uh, I don't know, um, bacteria, mice, I mean, like many um, different species. You can look up in our paper if you're interested. Uh, so and we observed that reads uh, with a sufficiently large number of seeds are very likely to align to subsequences in their difference. Uh, genome. And so, so that is intuitive, right? Because if you have many um, seeds, basically many chimeras of a read matching into the um, uh, to the reference genome, then it's high likelihood, okay, that's very similar, so that would likely align. Uh, so that is intuitive. And then we show uh, that, okay, um, after this threshold, it's uh, very likely. Um, of course, the design can also be set for different thresholds, uh, depending on the organism or how much data you want to filter on inside the SSD. Uh, so uh, given this, reads that already have a lot of um, matching locations and a lot of seeds can directly be sent to uh, the whole system for full read mapping by a and bypass the storage filter because these reads wouldn't filter anyways. So we don't need to invest on see, uh, performing that operation to see whether it would filter or not. Uh, and as you see, this is a minor detail, but anyways, uh, here based on read mapping heuristics, they also automatically neglect uh, reads that have less than specific number of seeds. For example, here we had two or three seeds. If the read has less than that, we would filter. So here we have between this lower bound, let's say two, and this upper bound here, 64. We want to perform in store filtering for these things because then you don't know exactly what's going to happen. Um, and actually, a lot of the reads uh, in various use cases we show fit in this case too. So uh, that can filter a large number of reads uh, between these thresholds. Um, so uh, we conclude that the selective lightweight uh, chaining approach can filter many non-aligning reads without uh, costly hardware resources inside the SSD. Uh, yeah. Okay, here. Uh, so I do not dive uh, into the details of it, the details of the design, how we exactly perform this chaining hardware efficiently inside the storage system. But if you're interested, please take a look at our paper. We um, in detail explain how GenStore and M works. So uh, now uh, let's go through our results. I will pause again a few seconds if you have any questions about GenStore and MEM genomics, anything, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'll go to the results. Okay, cool, let's go. Um, so we evaluate the following systems. 
So BASE, which is a state-of-the-art software or hardware read mappers for both short and long reads, uh, which actually shows that, okay, if you have a um, software read mapper or hardware read mapper, we can integrate GenStore with it. So that's why we choose our baseline from uh, various state-of-the-art mappers in software and hardware um, and for short or long reads. And GS here in the plots I will show you shows a base integrated with GenStore inside SSD. So basically we want to see how much GenStore, uh, how GenStore augments these uh, accelerators, how much it can improve their performance by um, integrating with them concurrently filtering rates inside the SSD. Uh, okay. And uh, we also evaluate these mappers and systems with various SSD configurations. So a low-end SSD, a medium-end SSD, and a high-end SSD. So you might ask why uh, do we just uh, not only consider high-end SSDs? Why do we consider low-end SATA SSD while we can have, I don't know, PCIe um, uh, gen, I don't know, X uh, different SSD generations of PCIe SSDs? Uh, so the answer is that in a lot of large scale um, uh, systems that want to have large scale storage systems, um, currently they use um, these lower end SSDs because uh, they are more scalable. So um, they would take, uh, let's say, the ports, a larger number of them would exist. Uh, and uh, so therefore you can attach more of them to the system and also they're more cost efficient. So currently in uh, a lot of these extremely large scale uh, source systems that we, which we would use for genomic data sets, uh, they use um, these low end SSDs. However, we also include evaluations and results as we will see for these high end SSDs uh, for uh, systems that would uh, use them in let's say smaller scale or for the future, which uh, this will be used um, uh, in more places. Uh, okay. So we analyze the uh, benefits of GenStore EM for a 22 gigabyte short read set with 80% of reads exactly matching to some subsequences in the reference genome, and then it can be filtered. So we show the benefits of GenStore on software and hardware read mappers. So GenStore provides um, 2.1 to 2.5 times speed up compared to the software baseline, and 1.5 times to 3.3 times speed up compared to the uh, hardware baseline. And uh, it also provides an average 3.92 times energy uh, reduction. Uh, so now let's analyze the benefits of GenStore NM for a 12 gigabyte long read set with very high degree of genetic variation compared to the reference genome, where 99.7% of the reads do not match to any subsequences in a reference genome. So now we show the benefits of GenStore on software and hardware read mappers. And uh, we show up to 27.9 times the speed up compared to the software baseline and 19.2 times the speed up compared to the hardware baseline and an average 27.2 times energy reduction. We find area and power values of GenStore by synthesizing GenStore EM and NM using 65 nanometer technology node and find that for an eight channel SSD, the area of GenStore is 0.2 millimeter square and the power is uh, 26.6 watts. And by scaling the area to lower technology nodes, we observed that the area overhead of GenStore is 0.006% uh, of an Intel processor and less than 9.5% of uh, the three ARM core ARM processors in a SATA assisted controller. Again, I'm giving this uh, smaller scale example because um, on a uh, more advanced controller, it would have been more hardware resources. So relatively this area uh, consumption of GenStore would be even less. So there are other results in the paper. Let me briefly talk about them. Uh, you can again check the paper if you're interested for more details. So these results include the following. Effect of read set features on performance. For example, for data set sizes, we scale them up to 440 gigabytes. 
and uh, filter ratio basically depending on the uh, species use case, real mapping use case, uh, we show how many um, uh, percent of a read uh, basically would filter and then according to that, how much it still provides benefits. Let me give you some examples. Um, it, uh, we uh, consider some COVID-19 data, uh, data sets to show this like highly um, evolving, like really quickly evolving uh, uh, species because since they evolve very fast and the differences between the, them and the difference genome is actually really large. So the filter, uh, so some data gets filtered again using JSTOR and M. Uh, or when you are in a lab and a human is uh, performing experiments on some sample data set, let's say some uh, data set collected from the Zurich uh, Lake, and we want to uh, do experiments on it. So since humans do this uh, data collection, usually you would align it to align whatever data you have, map it to human refer uh, uh, reference genome to remove contamination. So hopefully uh, only a small amount of data would align and a large amount of data would be discarded, not aligned to the human difference because human here is contamination in a sense. Um, so that would, would be another example we talk about that a lot of the reads wouldn't align. Um, also for human data set, I already talked to you and showed the results of it um, that um, since humans are very similar, um and their genetic uh information let's say so on average like 80 percent of the reads would match to uh, the human reference genome so and then various other examples so if you're interested please check um then we have um a performance benefits of an implementation of genstore outside dssd um because we have different optimizations right uh, we wanted to see how would those perform if you have them outside the SSD. Uh, in some cases, it provides performance benefits due to more efficient streaming uh, accesses as opposed to random accesses uh, to the index. Uh, but it provides a significantly lower benefit compared to GenStore because in the end, the index is like um, it's large and needs to be streamed outside the SSD. So it uh, is uh, we show significantly larger performance benefit uh, for genstore inside the SSD. We also perform more detailed characterization uh, of non-matching reads across different read use cases and species. I already talked to you about it, uh, some examples of it. So now let me conclude this talk by giving the summary. So. As we discussed, there has been significant effort into improving read mapping performance through efficient heuristics, hardware accelerators, and various filters that prune reads that do not uh, require expensive computation. While these approaches address the computation overhead in read mapping, none of them alleviate data movement overhead from storage, whose impact becomes even larger when the computation overhead gets alleviated. Our goal is to improve performance of genome sequence analysis by efficiently uh, and effectively reducing unnecessary data movement from storage systems. And the key idea is to filter reads that do not require the expensive um, ASM or approximate stream matching computation in the storage system to fundamentally reduce data movement overhead. However, filtering reads inside SSD is challenging because read mapping workloads can exhibit different behavior um, based on uh, the genomic data that we're analyzing, and there are limited available hardware resources in the storage system. And to this end, we propose GenStore, the first storage processing system designed for genome sequence analysis to reduce both uh, computation and data movement overhead. And we show that GenStore provides high performance and energy benefits compared to uh, state-of-the-art hardware and software baselines. So thank you very much for uh, listening to this talk. Uh, please let me know if there are any questions. I'd be happy to um, answer. So meanwhile, uh, let me mention that there are also some 
um, pianist courses on um, genomics offered by our group uh, that you can take further um, if you're interested to familiarize yourself um, with uh, accelerating these workloads in software and hardware uh, domains and um, some lectures also um, which uh, let me check yeah, there are some lectures already listed in the YouTube descriptions um, that you can also refer to. Yeah, and talk to us also if you're um, interested in any of these topics. Uh, okay. Let me ask one last time, are there any questions from the Zoom audience? Okay, cool. Thank you very much everyone for uh, listening. Uh, and yeah, I wish you a very nice day, okay.